So I recently added this uh, cool modal to my side project. It's just a way to add goals, but it slides up like you see in most iOS modal windows and you could submit the form and then it slides down. And this uses Tailwind UI, but I actually ended up swapping out the transition component from Headless UI, which is what Tailwind UI uses for all of its examples with Framer Motion. And I wanna tell you exactly why I did that. So let's take a look at a small a reproduction of my modal here. So this is just a, a simple next app. We just have this one screen and you can see, you can press the plus button and we see a modal. And so this is the whole page right here. We just have this button that sets some state to true. And then we render this add favorite component right here. We can see that this fetches some data. It renders this modal. And then here's kind of the contents of the modal. You can see all the names right there. We iterate over them right here. And we say, choose a contact to add to favorites right here. So that's all that. But the actual functionality that renders the modal is in this modal component, which is right down here. And uh, I'll put all this code on GitHub and link it in the description so you can take a closer look. And this is kind of what you get when you start out with Tailwind UI. Now here I actually started with uh, the free example. So if you go to Tailwind UI and you go to modals and you go to the simple with gray footer here, this is what you're gonna see. And you know, when you see this on a bigger screen, it looks like this and then you shrink it down. And since we're working on mobile, this is kind of our starting point. So you can see there how the transitions work. And we go back to my example. I basically just altered this to make it full screen because that's how I wanted this treatment here. But other than that, uh, it's working just fine. So let me walk you through kind of the main problem I have with how this works out of the box. And that has to do with this data request right here. Now, if I refresh this page, we'll actually see uh, this, which is our kind of mock server responding to this data request right here with this list of 50 users. But this is in the add favorite component, which we can see is not rendered by default here in our app. So only when we press plus do we actually see this component, but the way these transitions are implemented and the way headless UI works is that this transition.root component needs to always be mounted so that it can control the mount and unmount animations for all of its children. Things like this transition.child, which fade in the background, and this transition.child, which kind of slides up and fades in the main modal. So that's why we see this pattern where we actually have to pass in our open state here. We have to pass it into our modal. And then finally, uh, we get to pass it into transition root. But that means that this hook is always going to run. And any other hooks we run or any other logic we write for this component will always execute regardless if this add favorite component is actually showing or not. And I find this really problematic right now. You know, it's making an extra data request, which is not the end of the world. But stuff like this is what gets you into defensive coding. You know, sometimes you need to write logic that really only makes sense if the parent component's in a certain state. But now you have to kind of cover cases where it's not in that state. It's not even rendered. Needless to say, this is going to end up making your code a lot more messy than it needs to be. So what I like to do when it comes to conditionally rendering modals is use the same pattern I would use to conditionally render any other piece of JSX in my React app, and that's just to use a conditional here. So ideally I'd be able to say open and render our add favorite. And so now this is only gonna render this component if this is true. So if we refresh our page right here, now we see our homepage renders, but we don't see uh, this call going out anymore. And once I click plus, now we see uh, actually a new loading state because this executes once this is rendered and then we see the users pop in. So that's taking care of that problem, right? But the new problem is we've lost all of our animations. And again, that's because now that we're conditionally rendering this component, if we peek down here and then we look into our modal, that means transition.root is going to be unmounted, which for it to work, it can never be unmounted. And so at this point, this is where I usually switch away from this transition component, which comes from headless UI React to Framer Motion. So let me show you how that works. All we need to do is first, we wanna wrap this line 
in something called animate presence. And this is a component which we can see, uh, we can import right from frame or motion right here. And this is effectively going to do the same thing that transition.root did by always being mounted, but it gives us a little more control over animating its children like this. And so now if we look at this, uh, we'll see we obviously still haven't changed anything yet, but it still works just the same. But now if we come down to our modal, let's comment out all of these uh, transition components since we're not gonna be using these anymore. Let's save it and make sure we haven't broken anything. And we see uh, an error from our dialog, which is from headless UI. It's telling us we provided an on close prop, but forgot an open prop. This is happening because transition root does some implicit wiring for the open and close state here, but because we're not using it anymore, we just need to pass in open like this directly to our dialog. And let's see if this works. Okay, so now we see our dialogs working again. But let me show you uh, how easy it is to animate this with frame or motion. So we can just pass an as prop here to dialog and instead of rendering a div, which is the default, we can actually pass in a motion.div. And that went ahead and auto imported directly from frame or motion. But this is what lets us do things like initial opacity zero, animate opacity one. And so now if we were to render this, we'll see our whole thing just animates in. But uh, of course, even cooler than that is the exit animation back to zero. Should fade in. And then when we hit cancel, it fades out. And that is exactly the prop that works because of the animate presence right here. But as we can see, you know, when we refresh this, we still aren't rendering our component until open is actually true. So no extra network request, no defensive coding needed here. Add favorite is only gonna run when it's actually being rendered like this, but we still get entrance and exit animation. So that's all really cool. And that's basically the idea here. But let's see how to spice this up and first recreate the animation that Tailwind UI gave us because uh, I want you to see how easy it is to basically go straight from these animation values that Tailwind UI provides because you know they're very thoughtful and they look really good and translate them into frame or motion. So dialogue here, we'll go back to just a div. Let's get rid of this root transition right here. And then here we can just look at these values and apply them to the overlay. So we'll do the same thing. We'll use a motion.div. We see the background just basically fades in from zero to a hundred at a duration of 300. So we can say, initial opacity zero, and then animate to opacity of one. And let's go ahead and hide the children here, just so we can focus on the background. And yep, we can see it fading in. Now we don't need this transition opacity class anymore because this is how transition.child worked. It worked by applying classes and using CSS, but uh, we're just using JavaScript now via frame or motion. So we can get rid of that and we should still see our fade. And now we can match these transition values by just passing transition here. We can say the duration is 0 0.3. This is in seconds, so that's 300 milliseconds. And for the ease, we can say it's ease out. So again, this is all part of frame or motion, but we can see it's pretty easy to map this to Tailwind UI's values. And now we have a bit more of a pleasing uh, fade in here. And we can go ahead and basically do the same thing for exit. This will be opacity zero. Leave duration is 200. And then the easing is uh, ease in right here. So we'll change this to ease in. Okay, so now we've got uh, the entrance and exit here. We can go ahead and get rid of this, get rid of this. And we'll do exactly the same thing here where we render our children. We'll just switch this to a motion.div. Come here and grab all these. Now this goes from opacity zero and translate y4, 
which again, frame of motion has this Y property, which is gonna let us translate it. And four is four on the spacing scale, which is 16 pixels. So if this is in pixels, we'll just put 16 here. Then we go to full opacity and a translate Y of zero. We'll ignore the desktop version here since we're just focused on mobile. So opacity one, Y zero, and then back to opacity zero and Y four when we leave. So exit will be opacity zero, Y 16 pixels, and we can see the duration and easings are the same. So if we check this out, we're basically right back where we started. Let's get rid of this, get rid of this. This whole modal is still reusable. Uh, we're rendering our actual specific content for the add favorite part here, but you know you could throw this into a components folder and use it everywhere in your app. Uh, let's go ahead and organize our imports. We'll see that we're not using transition anymore from headless UI. But again, most importantly, if we clear the console and refresh the app, we don't have any of this code running until we actually render it to the screen. But we've done that without sacrificing our enter or exit animations. So before we go, let me show you a few tweaks to this animation that I made just to emulate the kind of modal windows that you see on iOS. So first to clean this up, uh, we don't need to pass in this open prop anymore. So let's get rid of this again, because we're using this to conditionally render. I'll delete it from here, which means I'll delete it from here. And then if I come down here and delete this, now we need to decide what to do uh, with this open prop right here. Well, basically the, this can always be true since we're controlling rendering from the parent. So that should be enough to make that work. And now I wanna show you just a few cool uh, animation values that I got actually from Ionic Framework, which uh, tries to emulate iOS and Android in their web tools. I can also put a link to that in the description. But if you see this kind of fade that we're doing right here, it's pretty cool. But you can actually replace these easing values with an array of values like this. And this is a Bezier curve that just gives a, a kind of cool look and feel to it. I'm gonna change the duration for the entrance to 0.4 and the exit to 0.3. And then if we check this out, you'll see it gives a, a bit of a different feel, but where we're really gonna notice this is right here. So instead of having this actually fade up, I want this to slide up from the bottom and slide down all the way to the bottom as well. So it's not gonna fade anymore. I'm gonna just drop these opacity values right here. And instead of just doing this 16 pixel kind of shift, the cool thing is in frame or motion, we can just drop 100% right here, which is going to shift it down by the full height of the window, go up to no vertical translation, and then exit back down again. So if we try this, there we see the slide, and that's pretty cool, but it still kind of feels off. But check this out, if we change this to 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and we grab these easing values, now when we do this, it has much more of a natural feel to it. And it has that kind of familiar more rapid deceleration when the window comes up and it gives it a little bit more time, which feels better because it's moving across the whole height of the screen. And then the only other part that I noticed from iOS is that the background doesn't have a gray tint. It's just black with a 40% opacity, which we can do like that. This just gives it a little bit more of a neutral feel. So again, I was really happy with kind of how this turned out. Again, the bigger point here is that I think it's really important to eliminate defensive code from uh, your code base. It's the kind of stuff that just crops up and grows over time and is very hard to understand, you know, a month or two down the road. But we have this reusable modal right here. It looks really good. It doesn't run any of its code until it's rendered. And everyone can choose to render it conditionally the same way they would conditionally render uh, any other part of the React app as long as they wrap this in an anime presence. So hope you found that useful. Again, uh, check the description for all the code and I'll also put the reference to the Ionic values. I think that's a really cool project to look at. It's open source and they've done a great job maintaining it. 
and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.